Good morning. Here we are in part two of the irrigation startup. Uh, Tracy informs me that this is April 29th, and I want to let everybody know that uh, what you see falling, if you see a little blur in the picture, that's actually snow falling. So let's remember that uh, spring and summer are still a little fickle in arriving in northern Ohio. Uh, most irrigation systems, I recommend starting them up sometime around, or at least running them, after Memorial Day. Let that grass, the roots, seek out the moisture, let them uh, grow and extend. If you water too frequently, you'll end up with a shorter root system and one that's going to demand to be watered and cared for all the time. So if you can let that grass in the springtime when the temperatures are cooler and generally the moisture in the ground is sufficient, it will start up and you will be in good shape. Some people have a tendency to want to turn them on real early and I think that's a little bit of a wasteful procedure. You'll waste a lot of money on water that's probably not necessary. Now we are going through a little bit of a dry spell because of our abnormal spring. Uh, it is cold and snowy today, but on the other hand, we've had 80 degrees and the grass has been up and growing for a long time. If you get a fertilization application and there's no rain in the forecast in the near future, go ahead and run the system, water that fertilizer and what into the ground and you'll be in good shape. But then turn it back off and let that grass do what it wants to do naturally and grow properly. Now, water conservation is a very important feature in our area uh, in today's time. Granted, we have Lake Erie up there. We have a pretty unlimited source of water. Other parts of the country are not so lucky. And of course, they want all our Lake Erie water. So conservation does happen to be a very important thing. Besides, it saves money on the pocketbook and saving money is an important factor. One of the most important things I want to show to you is up here, and this is a rain stack. What this does when it's raining, this will collect the water and at a certain setting that you set it at, maybe a quarter of an inch or whatever, it will shut itself down and turn this irrigation system off by sending a signal through this transmitter down to the receiver. The receiver will then go through the controller and turn the controller off so that while it's raining or if it's rained prior and it's still damp, it will not turn on. That's a good feature to have. It'll save and conserve water. Next, what you want to do, if you don't have one of those, you might want to look into getting one of those and make sure it's properly set up. Next thing you want to do is come over here to the controller and make your adjustments as such. First thing you want to do is make sure that the controller is actually functioning and working properly. One of the most common things that happens is that this device, which is a low voltage transformer, can malfunction and go out. It's the same device that runs your doorbell on your house. They're just a little different uh, voltages and such, so you can't quite interchange them. Of course, they got to make it that way, you know, so you got to buy a hundred different kinds. But anyway, this device can go bad. This is the power, the heart of the unit. If this device has malfunctioned and is no longer working, you won't be able to get any readings from the system. The only way you'll be able to do that is if you have a fresh live battery in there, you'll at least be able to tell that, but the system will not turn on, and generally it'll tell you that you have a power shortage, power error. These things are pretty uh, computer savvy and will kind of smart tell you what some of the problems are. So if it doesn't turn on properly and you have a power problem, that very likely is the source. Next, what you want to do is come to your controller, make sure that the date, the time, everything is set properly. You don't want to set this thing to be watering on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and you don't have the proper day set in here because it, it can only go by the way you set it. So make sure that the proper day and time is on the program and then move from there. Generally go through the dial. Uh, some of your more important features are how long does a zone run? Now, quite often we see controllers set every program 20 minutes, every program 30 minutes. The worst ones are every program 5 or 10. That's barely getting the grass wet. But not every zone covers the same amount of area. So what you want to do is while you're adjusting your heads and setting up, you want to see which zones are getting real good coverage, three or four sprinklers coming into the area, hitting them, 
other areas, maybe only one or two are hitting that area. So you got to make a determination as to which zones need to run longer, which need to run shorter. Also, sometimes the way systems are set up, mostly the way they're set up, take your backyard for example, you have a row of heads up by your house. They're throwing from the house into the backyard. That's basically a half circle, quarter circles on the corners, they're throwing half. Go out into the middle of the yard, these sprinkler heads are operating full circle covering the entire yard. The ones on the property line, the corners, are throwing half circle into your yard. Common sense says those zones should run twice as long as the ones that are up against the house or the ones that are on the back property line. So take that into consideration when you're programming this, that you have an equal distribution of water. To fine tune it, you can take saucers or cups and put them out in the yard when the program runs through a cycle, you can check and see, does this one have three inches of water in it? I think I'd better cut it back. Uh, this one has just a quarter of an inch. Well, maybe we want to bump it up. So those are good ways to check, but it's very important to fine tune those zones so that they run the proper amount of time. These systems are set to put out somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 gallons of water per minute. So if you're wasting three, four minutes here, five minutes there on a six to 10 zone system, you see this can add up to 30 minutes to an hour of wasted watering times 10, 15 gallons a minute. That's a lot of water over an entire summer. Also, it's important to set these things really not to water every day uh, because what you want to do, do is water uh, so that the water runs deep into the soil and the roots can again seek out that moisture. If you water every day for five minutes, the water, the, the water will be on the shallow surface, the roots will be shallow, and it's be more drought prone and problematic when the temperatures get hot. Also, people will ask me, so therefore, in something like that, I would recommend running it two to three times a week. Every other day, every third day, sometimes every fourth day, depending. So on an average, maybe three times a week, so something like that. And oftentimes if people get their grass cut on a Friday, you want to water it after the grass has been cut, not before. So you make sure that the program is set accordingly. Also, the last thing I want to cover is when do you water? A lot of people like to see that thing run. They like to see it running when they're coming home from work, going to work, whatever. That's not really a good time. The best time to run this system is after midnight. Reasons for that, the factories are shut down, the usage of water is minimal, you've got the higher water pressure, the wind dies down so you don't have much misdirection, misguidance from wind. You also have your uh, sunlight which is non-existent at night so your evaporation is minimal. So these are the best time to run it. Don't worry about uh, disease because in order for disease to set in, you basically have to keep the grass wet for more than 12 hours over an extended period of time. The dew sets in in the evening, 9, 10 o'clock, the grass is already wet. If you don't have to get a dew that night, all right, you're wetting it. But the worst time to actually water would be dinner time and breakfast time because that's what extends that 12 hour period into 15 hours and that can cause problems. So there it is, good luck, go out, See what you can do. If you have problems, check our website. We might have a few details of information to help you out, maybe on Facebook. But on the other hand, if you really get stuck, give us a shout. We'll help you out. Indeed. Want to learn more about irrigation techniques? Be sure to visit www.briankiles.com where you'll have access to all of these how-to videos.